is the second part of the video from the manifold selection for the uh, Windsor based cylinder heads. Now we're up to the big boys. The Brodix nail, the SC1, uh, the C3, but the SC1. The C3 is pretty good, but it has its limitations. Okay, so uh, when you get a little kit, smaller cubic inches, the C3 will be fine, but uh, when you get to this big Brodixes and uh, SC1, there's a, or even the Blue Thunders when they're seriously worked on, uh, it can make a very, very big impression as much as power is concerned. Now, here we are, uh, Brody Sneal, for one of the engines we're working with Dana and Brad Udell, and uh, Sally Barra for uh, giving us a, a race car. You know, so uh, we got a pretty good. Uh, uh, group going. Anyway, when these things are evaluated in the dyno, they use this kind of manifold plastic type that they uh, could easily carve and make a uh, uh, basically a, a test piece before they go to the to the serious ones. Now, what I have here is uh, this is uh, one that I've ran. 10 years ago, okay? Look how tall that is compared to the other one. It has a, a spacer plate on top of the plenum that's really somewhat permanent in there. And there's no ridge that you feel as far as flow is concerned. But what goes on here is this. See all this welding? It's been split up years ago, been cut, all right, and the one half is bolted on the heads, so I could flow test it, evaluate my cylinder head with the manifold in place. Not with this, you know, that's why it's cut in half before, and you see all the welding underneath. No, then I can see the actual numbers I have with the rudders in there. And uh, again, when I bolt it on, I go in there with a flashlight, look in there, line it up, tug it this way, that way, tighten one side first and make sure my alignment is good. But once I start pressing down on it and I see a mismatch coming up, especially on the port roof, that's a no-no. Then it's back out again in either a meal or epoxy to make it run. That's why when you look at this, you see the, the welding, okay? Very, very obvious. And the plenum, so uh, this was a motorsport, a heavily modified Ford Motorsport 351 manifold. It was run on a stroker. Now, here's the latest version that's been very, very uh, expensive to buy and to machine. This manifold. It's a two-piece, and uh, it has a thick flange, very heavy, and you gotta cut it to to fit. Okay, so uh, uh, when you look at this, big. Now, this manifold, I am bolt, and I put one half to the head, and I run it on the flow bench that I can really evaluate the capability. I always like to run the heads with the manifold on. Okay, so uh, this gives me an actual, uh, more, uh, should I say, uh, real world. Okay, the heads look impressive running on the flow bench. This one here pulls about 435. Not bad for a Brodix Neal. A Blue Thunder that I did with an intake port plate runs similar numbers, slightly less, because the Brodix Neal has got more of a straight intake port. They go straight to the valve. Whereas the Brodix, I mean the, uh, the Blue Thunder kind of like a little, got a little curve, okay, going through the cylinder wall. So anytime you have a little bend, it's not going to flow as much. You may have a little swirl induced. Uh, uh, 
mixture of motion there, especially when it goes to the combustion chamber. But once you start bending it, you have two unequal sides, and it has a tendency to swirl clockwise or counterclockwise. It depends on the approach of the port. Now, this is bolted on the head and felt tested. Now, let me tell you a little story. I worked. I work in a Mercedes uh, Daytona, 24-hour Daytona, and 12-hour Le Mans uh, race team, and high dollar. And uh, their manifold is uh, uh, made out of uh, some fancy material. I forget what it is. But anyway, make a long story short. When I evaluated the intake manifold, impressive as it is, but the problem is the port inject the injector port was on the busy side of the rudder. That is good when you're looking at startup, warm up, drivability, great. But a high RPM, these guys are turning a lot of RPM. Why do you have the injector port on the business side protruding into the airstream? What I told them is you have to take that injector nozzle, put it underneath where there's not much uh, airflow intrusion. And I told them, you guys spent a lot of money on his manifold. And when I lob off part of that injector uh, thing, it picked up airflow quite a bit. Now, every time you pick up airflow without enlarging the port, just taking off the bends or the intrusions and stuff like that, then you're going to gain power. And like I said, they made this manifold out of a fancy material. But they followed the factory layout where injectors in the most treatable position that's possible. Great, but it's not a race car. This was an SLR manifold. Now I told them, put it underneath, away from the airflow, and then you're going to have what you're looking for. But when you're thinking street mentality and you're building as a racing manifold, you got to think about just all performance, nothing to do with drivability, warm-up, you know. So the way the manifold injector was was uh, configured through the runner on the top side, the fast part of the port, they have an injector button. Put it underneath. Okay, just like when you look at a valve guide on the head, right behind the guide, there's hardly any activity there. All right? So there's no intrusion. So if you inject some, in fact, some heads, and I work on it. Some of them are injected Chevy. Uh, one guy from Palmdale. The injectors on the uh, long side of the port facing the airflow. Okay, airflow is coming in this way, and the injector is shooting directly in front of it. So I'll blast it into place. Very effective. But when you're looking at it, wow, it's going against airflow. But it does have a tendency to blast it into the, into the airstream and keep it mixed. Okay, so uh, same thing with this Mercedes manifold. Uh, fancy, but they wasted a lot. You know, uh, great idea, very light manifold, raw execution, injectors in the wrong place. So same, same thing here. Uh, again, manifold, make sure it matches the intake port. Capability. You don't want to choke the head with the manifold. Or if the manifold is too big and then <laughs> the intake port is not incapable of producing the same amount of airflow, then you're kind of like uh, kicking it backwards. Make sure that they match up. There's consistency there. What you don't want is uh, the flow path to come in, enlarge, slow down, and speed up. What you want is consistency. If there's any kind of Tapering, maybe just a little tapering to speed up the airflow going to the valve. That's okay. All right, but you don't want it to go big and bigger. <laughs> okay, it doesn't work that way. You know, you lose so much uh, uh, velocity or, you know, you lose the airflow. You're not ramming into the port. You're actually so now you have a tendency to have fuel drop off, summer so now you get sluggish. You know, trauma response is everything in the world. And uh, sizing the intake port volume accordingly to the cubic inch and the RPM 
will give you wonder, and that's how you win races. Okay, so no go ever work. Again, the importance. Always line up your manifold. All right, I see a lot of people port their heads, make it match the gasket, do everything right. They put the manifold on, and it don't line up. They don't even know about it. They don't even look in there. And I've done it, come across so many edges when I break it down to do some improvements or hopefully just a routine maintenance. And I open up, even edges built by me that somebody else has put together or maybe freshened up, they just slap on the manifold. And some guys that are, you know, got time in there and they pin so the manifold sits and lines up the same exact place all the time. But once you meal the head or you change the head gasket thickness, then you lose it. You lose the alignment. That's why sometimes you have a, a very good running engine bought from a pro, excellent, produces good power. By the time it goes to a different shop, they do their own twist to it. And sometimes it happens that they lose its power. And then you wonder why. If it's working for you, go back to that guy again and let him do it over for you. Okay? Uh, don't be bouncing all over the place. But then again, that's your, your choice, your money, your engine. You bounce all over the place and somehow down the line, somebody's going to make a mistake. Give it to the guy that gave you the win last time. More likely, he can deliver a better one next time. Okay? Over and out, guys. Take care.